seek and ye shall find knock and the door will be open unto you ask and it shall be given you or given to you these are rather a universal principle it is what we call It is what we call an, let me put it this way, a divine invitation, a divine invitation to an ordinary journey to success I stand here before all of you today to announce something to everyone this afternoon the Holy Spirit spoke with me And he said, I shall tell those who live in planet Earth and those who live in other planets, wherever they are, whatever spirit they are or beings, that I shall make them aware that he has appointed me use the word messenger he has appointed me to be his messenger i am the holy ghost messenger he also spoke in terms of divining things of the job of those installed to divine things to mediate sacred things in human history that I he has sent me to announce to you all that I am the Holy Ghost Oracle The Holy Spirit told me that he trusts me. He trusts me and that he loves me. And he has searched me and found that my intention for doing everything in life is pure and my motives are truthful they are the right motives with that let's start ask and it shall be given to you thank you Vicky Ask and it shall be given you. Jesus did not specifically say, Ask God. Just as we assume that that possibly what he meant. But he is throwing back at us. A law. This is ask and ye shall be given you, seek and ye shall find, 
knock the door will be open for you. He is revealing to us how business is done on earth and in the heavenly realms. You see, verse 8 of Matthew chapter 7 says, for everyone who ask it, or everyone who ask, they receive. Really? Then why doesn't people receive everything they ask for all the time? Because verse 8, the beginning of verse 8 says, For everyone who asks receives. Mary, if you are there, you can unmute yourself. And you can you can participate. You are supposed you are the one who, who ministered alongside me with Vicky. For everyone who asks, they receive. Is it always so? So, so. Sometimes. Hmm. So, why is it that everyone who asks receive according to Jesus? And the answer is this. Let's now go to scriptures. Please, if you want to say something, unmute yourself. Only make sure that you have the character of when you finish shouting hallelujah or something, you will unmute, you will uh, you will mute yourself back. If you don't have that in you, don't talk. Just be quiet and listen. Why is it that everyone who asks receives? Lizzie, I'm, I'm throwing this question at you. You should tell me why. Anne, why? Vivian, why? If you get the answer, unmute yourself and then you can speak up. Mary, I'm not sure you are on the line tonight. Where are you? All right. I'm here, please. Okay. All right. Hello. Okay, stay there. Stay there. You were supposed to not to unmute yourself if you if you if you mute yourself i'll come and carry you away i'll ask the wind to carry you <laughs> so those of you on the line who are disciplined who can mute unmute yourself and mute yourself back can you speak up mary keep yourself on mute keep yourself on mute your discipline Don't mute yourself, okay? Please, do not mute yourself. Unless unless there are things happening around you, then you can do that. So people of God, help me here. Where is Vivian? Where is the V girl? Why is it that everyone who asks receives? But is that the way it is on earth? Because, you see, ask, seek, knock is about... Going to God to ask for any good thing. It is also going to humans to ask, to seek, and to knock at doors. So it, this particular verse, Matthew 7, verse 7 and verse 8, relates to asking humans and asking God. Mary, remind me to do a broadcast on how Matthew 7 verse 7 relates to us. You are going to ask yourself, 
seek within yourself and knock the door of your life for the first time in your life. Because nobody has ever told you that this has to do even with you. It's always had to do with God in prayer. But now you see it has to do with three people. You are going to ask to seek and to knock at the door of the throne of God and at the door of other human beings and at the door of your own life. Oh. Oh. Uh -huh. You didn't know that. That's why I'm very clever. I have been given extraordinary intelligence to use scripture to solve human problems. And the quicker I start to get the reward, the better, so that I can focus and do more. Yes, Where is Lele? Because I need all my supporters to be on the on the on the broadcast tonight. This is very, very important. So Mary, don't forget to remind me to do that. So why is it that he said, ask and it shall be given you, or given to you? Okay. And then verse 8 says, for everyone who asks, they receive. When you ask human beings, do they always give to you? No. When you ask God, do God always give to you? Not really, not every time. For so many reasons. Many, it might be, you are not yet matured to handle what you're asking for. Others, you've already made up your, your, your mind exactly what you're looking for. So why are you then bothering God? Don't pray for nothing. Do not live, L-I-V-E. Don't exist in this world for nothing. Because that's a crime against the universe and against the throne of God. <laughs> Spirit of Jesus, come among us, come among us, do mighty things today. Spirit of Jesus, come among us, come among us, do great things today. Holy Ghost, ooh, come among us, come among us and do great things with me. Spirit of Jesus, come among us, come among us and do great things for me. Holy Ghost, come among us, come among us and do great things for us. Oh, Holy Ghost, come among us, come among us and do great things with us. Oh, Holy Ghost, oh, come among us, come among us. And do great things for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of a lot of the songs you hear me sing are just made up on the spot. You've never heard them before. Because they come out of me as a spirit by the work of the Holy Spirit upon me as a spirit being. Because only what comes from the inside, what is deep within you, when it oozes out, 
That's what gives you money. That's what gives you everything. So why is it that in this verse, everyone who asks, they receive? If you ask, it shall be given you if you simply do that. But that's not always the case. Let's use scripture to interpret scriptures. You must, you must ask the right person, the right people, the right group. You must ask, you must seek. In fact, let's begin with seeking. You must seek, knock, and ask in the right geography. You must do it in the right location where you ask. Now I go. Here we go. Here we go. Listen very carefully to what I'm about to say. Liko, listen very carefully. And all of you, listen very carefully to what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> this is so important that if you don't get this, you'll never get it again. You must seek, knock, and ask. Especially when it comes to what you want among human beings. And you are knocking at, you are seeking and knocking and asking a human being, a group. Persons a business, government. You have to ask in the right geography, in the right location, where you, as a spirit being, belongs. Ay, 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 ay. Are you guys listening? Where you, as a spirit being, has been anointed, and that's where you belong. Before you came into this world, you were appointed, whether you know it or not. That's your geography. That's your location. Now, let me give you an example. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> if Joseph remained in the tent, tent, T E N T, because remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were Bedouins, were tent dwellers. They were people who dwell in big, big tents. Wherever they go, they make their home there. The first time they began to settle down was with. Isaac, Abraham a little bit, Isaac a bit more, Jacob a whole lot. With Joseph, they began to really settle down. But now they were settling down in the wrong place, in Egypt, wrong place. But for Joseph, right place to save their life <clears throat> for that time. I am not sure how Joseph negotiated powers before he died. Because the best thing to have done would have been because now the seven years of famine was, was passed. It was passed. Joseph did not send his people to return back to their land, which is the normal thing he should have done. So it was like the prophecy about Isaac. Anne, I don't know whether you are on this call tonight. Because I shared that passage with you and with Mary. Isaac found that the land was good. There was enough food to eat. He relaxed and did not know that he has put his hand to forced labor. He became a laborer slave. 
that was the word that God used to move me from one of the places I was back in Africa. He asked me to go and look at certain scriptures. God will call you and ask you to go and look at certain scriptures. He will tell you the book of the Bible, the chapter and the verse. He told me specifically, go and look at that. I went and looked at it. He said, leave. I do not want you to put your hand to forced labor. And I left. Amen. And today I'm blessed. Amen. You see, if Joseph was still in the land of Canaan, his global leadership will never have happened. His dream would have been passed on to somebody else. I hope you are listening to what I'm saying tonight. Yeah. So the, the issue is that you can be born. Hold on one second. Hello? Hello? Yes, I'll call you back. I am at the television right now. Bye bye. That's my realtor in Vegas. They found houses for me to buy in Las Vegas. <laughs> that sounds good. I'll call her back. Mary, that's the that's that man from Ghana, William. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's William. So it is his uh it is his people that he's connecting for them to help find uh, us houses to buy in in uh, Las Vegas. <sighs> yeah. So if Joseph remained in the land of Canaan with a big dream in his life it would never have been accomplished because even though he was born a Jew a Hebrew he did not belong to them he belonged to a separate class of people he belonged to a different people somewhere else where he fit in and that is to the Egyptians. So in reality, even though he was a Hebrew, born of Hebrew parent, but he belonged to a different geography, he belonged to different people. That's why when you go to look for Joseph's record among the, among the Egyptian papyri, papyri or papyri or parchment or documents, you will not see it. Because he was not given the name Joseph. The Pharaoh gave him a different name. They gave him his name. The name of his success. The name of where he truly belonged. Doesn't mean you should go and change your name. He now became an Egyptian. Married an Egyptian, have Egyptian children, although the father came to now do something about that situation in order to reclaim them. Joseph couldn't even Joseph couldn't claim his own two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. Jacob has to claim them in order to put them back in the bloodline. Did you know that? When Jacob Joseph's father arrived in Joseph's house before he left this earth he now claimed Ephraim and Manasseh as though he was the one that fathered them he took them away by divine rights from Joseph because Joseph now is an Egyptian and Ephraim and Manasseh has to be called back to the bloodline where they come from through Jacob. 
You have to know this game. That's why he said to when he arrived in the house of when he arrived in the palace of Joseph, he said, These two are mine, they are not yours. You have to know this. Even though he was not the father that made them, Joseph is their father, but now they belong to their grandfather. Read the Bible, you'll see it. He took Ephraim and Manasseh and reroute, reroute the bloodline from an Egyptian only bloodline, Egyptian uh, from an Egyptian culture and Egyptian bloodline, which I mean, there is also a, a Hebrew bloodline there because of Joseph. But he is telling them by giving them a place among the twelve. Now he has 14 kids. Instead of 12 sons, there are now 14. He now added Ephraim and Manasseh to their bloodline, full bloodline, legal bloodline of the Hebrews. And then started giving them blessings. In fact, Ephraim and Manasseh were blessed first before the rest of the eleven were blessed. The blessing that Jacob never gave to Joseph, he was forced to give it. And that is why when people do not want to recognize what God is trying to do through you, what the universe is trying to do through you, Somewhere along the line, something will happen that will change event. And that is why it's good to include God in your portfolio. Don't just include money in your portfolio and include other human beings. Make sure that God is part of your portfolio. So that when human beings do not recognize you, do not want you, God, who is part of your portfolio will create event that will make human being to recognize you and to want your services and with that you climb into success forever yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> destiny and assignment has to do with you as a spirit being. Not just you as a brain and mind and flesh and blood, no. And bones, no. That's why when I'm ministering, I am ministering to you as spirit to spirit. Because until I touch the core of your being, there will be no change. There will be no prosperity for you. No healing, nothing. So you as a spirit being that came for an assignment on, on the physical earth belong to a certain group of people. Whether you were born among them or not, doors, doors, there will be an opening for you among them when the time is ripe and if you understand this thing if not you will die you will die where you are and you will not amount to anything and that is why Abraham will have died where he was and will not have amounted to anything and God came and said let's go you are better than this you were born where you are huh? you were born in the awe of the Chaldeans but you don't belong to them. That's why leave the land to them. Leave the few camels and donkeys and horses and all these animals. Let them take it. Let your family members take hold of that. Don't go back there. You are not going to be carried back when you die to that place. They are not your people. From now on, know it. I hope you guys are getting what God was telling Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. 
Those of you who want to go back to your country to go and die there, to go and do business there, you are a joker and a clown. You can't, you, you may be born in Barbados. It does not mean you are going to die in Barbados. Because Barbados doesn't have anything for you. St. Lucia does not have anything for you. You must ask God, who are your people? Amen. Where are your real people? Because until you mix this with those who are your real people, who are your real, the people of your destiny, the people of your assignment, you will be struggling, you will be having divorces, you will be poor, you will be sick, people will be attacking you, because if you are in among your own people, your real people, as spirit, not just as flesh, people will stop attacking you and they will start embracing you. Hallelujah. They will stop denying you and start accepting you. You won't have any garage for the cars that will be given to you. Your bank account will be full of money because you're one of them. And they want to do something for one of the for one of them, even though by blood you are not. But by supernatural blood you are. And that is what happened to Joseph. He was a Hebrew, but he didn't belong to them. And that is why when he had a dream, they didn't want him. If he was one of them, they would have accepted him. He was now a threat. He was a threat to them. They betrayed him and sold him. You have to know these mysteries and mastery of life. That's why when, when Joseph appeared before the Pharaoh, he knew that he was before the person he should work with. He knew it. And when you are with the person you should work with, when you tell them something, they will listen to you. They will obey you. And they will give you open doors, opportunities. All that Pharaoh said to Joseph, I'll be greater than you in terms of the throne. But the rest of Egypt, you are the governor. Take charge. I depend on you to run this place. And whatever you say goes. Nobody can come behind your back to come and tell me anything. Do you know that before you can go to Pharaoh, you have to go through, you have to go through Joseph? So there was nothing like somebody going behind his back to go and tell Pharaoh, hey, you see, this Joseph, the governor, you doing that. No, you, you are not even a, if you go there, they will, you see what they will do to you. You are not even allowed to go near the Pharaoh. You cannot go near Pharaoh until you have seen Joseph first. If you try to go, they will ask you who brought you there and they will put you in jail. That's how serious it was. When Joseph asked, I hope I've given you enough example. Let's lose Ruth. When Ruth entered Bethlehem from the land of Moab with Naomi, what happened? You see how things quickly escalate and they accommodate her. See what Boaz was saying to her. Nice, kind words. Why? Because she belonged to Bethlehem and not to the land of Moab. And she knew it. And now she's part of the bloodline of Jesus. Gave birth to someone who became the father. Or the grandfather of David. And see how it goes all the way to Jesus. So while well, people are telling you, hey, you don't belong here. You are not an American. You are not from Norway. You are not from Germany. You are not from London. Tell them to shut their big old crappy mouth. Because if you know that is really where you were born to belong, please listen. We call this born to belong. Mary, write that down because I'm going to ask you for this title. I might change it. I might use it. Born to belong. You were born to belong. 
So even if they're telling you, ah, oh, you are not of European descendant, ah, oh, you are not of African descendant, if you are among African people, or you are among your people of European descent, ah, oh, you are not European American, ah, oh, you are not Native American, oh, you are not Native Canadian, oh, you are not, you are not uh, an Anglo-Saxon. That's people from the UK. That's what we call them, Anglo-Saxons. Hey, you are not an Aussie. You are not from Australia. I don't know whether I'm using a good word or not. I don't want to offend anybody. You are not a New Zealander. You are not a Russian. You are not from China, Vietnam, Korea, Singapore, Taiwan, Thailand, South Korea. You are not from Brunei or Malaysia or Indonesia. You are not one of us. You are not an Arab or a Pakistani or a Jewish person. Tell them to shut their big old mouth because what you know they don't know. That's why you stay among, among people that you were born and you'll be poor, you'll be cheap, you'll be weak and you'll die and achieve nothing. You have to know who your real people are and where you belong. And when they start challenging you, oh, you don't belong, you tell them, you shut, this is where I belong to. I am from here. Stop asking me where I'm originally from. Doesn't matter. Sometimes when I am when I am in a taxi in a different state or a different country, eh, where are you really from? I say, does it matter? Where were you originally born? Does it matter? Ha! Does it matter? No, that is what are you gonna do with it? <laughs> you get back off. Move over. I'm not a pushover. I'm not a walkover. <laughs> you see, when Joseph was in what we call Adult Detention Center, ADC, which is another name for jail. Adult Detention Center. <laughs> That's what I call it. When he was there, when the butler and the baker were leaving, those that he interpreted dream and treated them kindly, when they were leaving, and he said to them that they should talk to the king about him, was he asking the right people? Yes. Yes. And that was why when Pharaoh had a dream, the butler remembered to ask on behalf of Joseph. And when Joseph was in the presence of Pharaoh, was he asking the right person? Yes. Yes. Was Ruth following the right person? The right mother-in-law? Yes. Did the mother-in-law send him? Uh, send her, please. Did the mother-in-law send Ruth to meet the right man called Boaz? Yes. yes. Did Ruth go to work? W-O-R-K. Go to have a job. A volunteer job. In the farm of the right person, yes. yes. Did Esther ask the right person to train her? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. yes. See, the Bible is full of the direction of the person whose messenger I am, the Holy Ghost. He's always directing the key figures of the Bible, of sacred scriptures, to be in the right land, the right location, and to talk, to ask the right people for what they need. And the answer is always yes, what they asked for was given to them. 
Why? Ask, and it shall be given to you. For everyone who asketh, that is verse 8 of Matthew 7, receives. So you see how the connection goes. Right place, asking the right person, and receiving the right answer, the right result. That is where you need divine direction for divine solution. So write that down as a powerful key. You need divine direction for permanent divine solutions with an S at the end. Now you see why people are not receiving. They ask, they don't receive. Because they are asking the wrong place. They are asking the wrong people or the wrong person. Now you see it right here. Many of them are asking the wrong God. <laughs> So now you know how you are going to ask so that you will not go to depression and lose your mind and want to take your own life and stop your assignment on the earth. See why it is very important to follow the Holy Ghost. Hmm. The Holy Ghost is the right God you are talking to on the earth. He's the right one. Jesus is the right Messiah, the right Savior, the right, the right owner of us. God the Father is the right God. I want you to lift up your hand today and begin to pray. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. And begin to pray and say, God, if I have been talking to the wrong God, reroute my talking. Let me talk to you. If I have been talking to the wrong people, going to the wrong place to look for job, look for promotion, look for marriage, love, all the different things you need, money, Lord, reroute me. Because you said, ask it and it shall be given you. And you said in verse 8, ask, ask and it shall be given to you. It's Matthew 7 verse 7. For everyone who asks, receive. That is verse 8. I want you to begin to pray. And we will go. I want you to pray. Say, God... The Holy Ghost, I need your direction for divine solutions. I want to begin to meet the right people. Yeah, I don't want to fail anymore. Ay, ay, ay. This is heavy. This is really, really heavy. Begin to pray.
all this in the name of our Messiah, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen and amen and amen. So stop asking, yeah, stop asking the wrong people. Stop. Now begin to ask the right people. The Holy Ghost is going to direct you from this day forward. And that is just how it's going to be. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is Thursday. Yep. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Leona. Hey.